this is one of your OEMs that you've had with Olson, right? There's been a whole series. Oh, there's been a whole lot, yeah, yeah. Yeah, early early in the game, uh, relatively early anyway, in the early 90s, uh, we started, that's when we started building a lot of those kind of products and we needed, we needed capacity. We didn't have it here. Uh, so uh, uh, we had been using a subcontractor in Atwater that was in a, a small space and he, but he had a, a wave solder machine and he, he knew how to do it. His name was Bob Williams and his wife. Um, I can't remember her name, but um, they uh, they did some work for us, and then we bought that company. And he he stuck he and his wife stuck around for probably what six eight months, something like that. But then we bought a a building in Atwater that uh, was probably eight thousand square feet, and. Uh, we added on to it uh, another 12,000 feet. So uh, my wife did all that. She she ran that her she ran that entire facility. Uh, so I, I never had to worry much about any of that. Uh, we just made product and shipped them. Uh, it was called TS Manuf. It was a separate company called TS Manufacturing. A guy showed up one day in the early 90s from Sony. And they were making aircraft entertainment systems, putting, uh, they were going to put screens on, in the, on, in the, on airplanes. And uh, he needed a modulator. Now, you would think Sony could do that, and they could. Uh, but they were doing it down in Orange County with a division of Sony. Uh, that uh, I believe it was run by Charlie Steinberg, who was uh, a, a real famous Ampex guy. He was an old neighbor of mine, but uh, very, very famous. Uh, like, you know, I mean, a, a big company administrator guy, video. And uh, I'm pretty sure Charlie was running that. But anyway, this guy was out of Canada. He was a consultant. And I, 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 I've, I haven't heard from him or seen him since. I really don't remember his name, but the, the application stuck in my head. And it was like uh, Sony was going to charge $11,000 per channel. And I thought, boy, I mean, I can do, you know, the whole head end piece they're looking for for half of that and make a lot of money. And I get a call one day from a guy by the name of Fred Grab. And Freddie was older gentleman, highly experienced engineer of, uh, you know, basically a guy that got things done. Big company guy. But he knew how to make things happen. And he had been given the challenge from his boss at Hughes they had just switched from being Lockheed, a commercial division of Lockheed, to Hughes. And they had hired him, but they had a job to put a cable TV system on Air Emirates Airlines. And he didn't have a head end, and he'd been every place. They'd been to Gerald, Gerald, you know, they don't, what, are you, what are you, crazy? You know, we got these boxes here. Well, but it, it doesn't fit. The airline industry, you gotta package it in a air ink box, you gotta meet certain radiation requirements and all these things. These are all things that I'd done at AirTech. Yeah. I understood what they had to do. Uh, some of it required a lot of a lot of innovation as far as grounding and cables because you know they they, they wouldn't they can't uh, the airline won't the, 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 the FAA doesn't stand for any emissions. Uh, some of it's silly, uh, <clears throat> but uh, to, the, to the point of being silly, but nevertheless, it, it cost them a lot of money to do it. But so Freddie shows up, tells us what he's got to do, and not only does he need the head end, he needs the con converters for every seat. 
I don't know, we can do that for you. Uh, well, we need stereo. Well, we can do that too. So I, we proposed the, a real simple dual carrier because we, we, had, we could space these things at any channel we want, so we used two subcarriers, one for left, one for right. So you get perfect separation, and it's, it's, it's simple analog stuff. Uh, and we built the head end. Uh, we did probably, I don't know, probably did 50 of those original ones. <coughs> but uh, it worked. Arab Emirates was really the first hmm. company to put TV sets in each seat. Uh, and uh, it was solid, it was rugged, it worked. And I got to meet this guy by the name of Richard Bertagna. And Richard Bertagna was the, uh, the president of that group of Hughes. He reported to Mike Armstrong, who was infamous in later years for screwing up AT&T Cablevision, among other things. But uh, he, he managed to, uh, to walk through that maze quite but but he was the first guy to ever put a television set on an airplane. Hmm.